hey what's up so I was planning to create videos about how to create entity adapter and do the store kit just a single video to hook it up with the create async tank so we will create some CRUD functionality with an HTTP requests but a single video was too long so here I am creating a, a whole series about most of these functions and how we can use them in the Redux Toolkit with the Create Async Tank. So to start, I created a completely new React app. It's so yeah, it it, it has already very Redux Toolkit uh, installed, and as you can see, we have this counter increment, decrement, add amount, add async, and all of that. We already went through this in my. Uh, tutorial about Redux Toolkit but to generate this app you will use the create you will use the create react app CLI but without installing it you will you can use npx then create react app give it any name you want then dash dash template give it Redux and it will generate something like this with the Redux Toolkit installed and you have a feature folder so each component a feature and you will divide by feature so yeah we will be focusing with this app in the create uh, entity adapter and the thanks of course as much as we can so first thing I already installed a package called react suit I think it's very awesome library it does not get the recognition it has uh, I think I gave it a star I hope so yeah <laughs> I don't know if that's it but uh, yeah we'll be using that so install it npm install our suit or yarn add and our suit and uh, that's it so need to add these styles so they are using CSS I think we have dark I will use the dark theme my eyes hurts me and I'll remove this counter uh, this component and I will remove all of that I will remove the class name I will remove the CSS, the logo, and hit enter. So let's refresh and see. Yeah, it should just be a dark screen. This is from the dark theme. And we compare this to this syntax. I I, I just like it. Well, it's not required. And let me remove everything for the counter. But before that, let's remove it from the reducer. So our reducers will be empty. And Fresh, hit enter. Oh, sorry, not refresh. I'm formatting using uh, Pretia. So I removed the counter from the counter reducer from the reducers and remove the counter feature. So yeah, I, we have now an empty folder. So let's just start. The first thing we need to create our entity adapter and fetch some data and put it inside our entities, and that's it. So I will create a folder called comments. I will be using the JSON placeholder comments. So I'll put a link in the description for this, but basically it's a free API that uses JSON server. You can set up one locally very easily. Maybe I will do a tutorial on this kind of stuff. And they have online these resources. So if you go to the comments, they have a hundred, but to filter it to only get 10, you will send underscore limit equal 10 as a query parallel. So we'll be using this input. But before that, let's just continue with our comments so I will create a file called comments to chess this is the component so I have an extension here called I think if I type react you'll see it it's this one react es7 react redux uh, whatever so if I type you don't need it but if you I type rckf it will give me a functional component uh, for your plate uh, but I don't like the syntax I like this so export uh, default comments I mean feel free, feel free to do whatever you want or there's another shortcut that I usually use is uh, this one it's longer with the prop types but I will remove these okay so this is our comments let's import this inside our app I'll, I will keep the folder structure here so can be or you might feel com comfortable with this so I'll go to the features then comments then the comments component and this is exported by default so you won't be structure anything uh, let's just pretend it 
can actually make this simpler if you are one of these people who like to make JavaScript simpler I'm not sure if it's simpler or not but yeah whatever so now if we go to our React Redux or if we are to our app sorry you will see we have this components here so yeah now let's go to work on our slice so comments dot or not dot, just slice dot JavaScript. Maybe you will do this. Maybe comments dot thanks, comments dot and yeah, but I'll just stick to this. I will put everything in a single file. Maybe you uh, can divide it. So first thing, we will import from the at Redux toolkit or Redux JS toolkit the create slice, then the create integer adapter. And the create a sync func format the code. Now, first thing I will create my slice. So, comments slice will be equal to create slice it end value. It will accept an object. Name will be anything you want. I will stick with comments. Now, we will have the initial state empty object for now and reducers like this and extra reducers also an empty object. And I will export. By the default export will be the comments slice dot reducer, and let's import this reducer inside our store. So import the comments, or I'll call it that reducer. So I'm importing the default exported uh, function from this file. So go forward or go backward then features, then comments, then the comments slice, and I will add a key inside my store called comments. So this is the key in the store. Uh, this will use this reducer. So yeah, I think you should know that, but by default, when you start your app, all your reducers will be called and the initial state will be returned. So yeah, I think you know that, but if I have here maybe this number and hit refresh, go to my Redux, you will see it. So yeah, just, and now it will be an empty object. I think you know that. And uh, yeah, so this is it for this and our store. Now let's create our thunk that fetches the comments. So const fetch comments will be equal to create a sync thunk. I will, this takes a name. So usually you will put the same name of your uh, slice, then the name of the function. This is what they do in the documentation, but you can do anything here, anything you want. I'll stick to that. You need here to define a function that returns a, a promise, but a quick way to do it, just put a sync. And this, just like this, will return a promise of this type. So if you are familiar with TypeScript, this will be a promise of void. It will like be written like this. Uh, so by default, every async function returns a promise. And to make it return something uh, or a promise with a value, you will return your own promise. So I will be using the fetch API. So fetch, and uh, let's go to this URL. And then fetch won't convert the data, so you need to convert it to the correct format, maybe XML, HTML, JSON. In my case, it's JSON, so response will be equal to response to JSON. I'm just called that. Sorry, not equal. I will just retain the response to JSON. So this is equivalent to this. But uh, if you have only a single line in your function, you can remove the body and remove the return statement in your arrow function, and this will be equivalent to return. So this is returned like this. We are returning the JSON. So we need to dispatch this function, or this action, sorry. So to do that, we will go to our comments and import from our slice the fetch comments uh, func then we will import from the redux from the react redux sorry react redux remove it up top there then the use dispatch and yeah by the way every when you uh, run that npx command that i showed you all of these packages will be installed, the React Redux, the Redux Toolkit, they, these two will be installed. So now we will have the dispatch function like this. 
and we need to dispatch that but if you do this this will dispatch the action and you might stick in an infinite loop let's try it hopefully not oh yeah this one is not exported so let's export that hopefully we don't face an infinite loop I mean, in this case, we want, but as you can see, uh, each time this component gets re-rendered, uh, this dispatch function will be called, which is not good, right? I mean, if we are accepting a props here, each time we have new prop, this will be called, so we don't need that. I think you know it, but we'll use use effect if you love functional components. So this will execute the callback that you give it, this one, each time any value inside the dependency array, the second argument, gets uh, its reference changed. So if, if I have maybe here a value like this, and the reference here changed, this function here will be called again. So that makes sense that I don't put anything here, right? So it will be only called one time. Let's check if that's true. Refresh, only one time. Now you will see your uh, linter or your uh, editor tells you that you need to put this patch here but you can I mean what, what they do that they read this code here and they realize that you are using something from outside this uh, from outside this callback function here so it's something you defined it outside so they will recommend you to put it here but according to the documentation use this patch will always retain the same function reference so this won't change and you don't need to put it here so yeah and actually, it makes sense to leave it just as an empty uh, array. But just to prove my point, if I have this patch here, the comments endpoint will be hit at one time, as you can see. And I will refresh again only one time, because this will uh, have the same reference always, even though that I am in re this component will be rendered two times, as you can see. Or no. I think you got my point. <laughs> Uh, you can't just remove this patch. Yeah. Hopefully that does not uh, confuse everything I said. You can't just ignore it. This is how I dispatch the fetch comments. And let's now put that inside our state using the create entity adapter. So let's define that. So const comments adapter. Is that how you write it? No, it's not. So create entity adapter adapter and that accepts an object has two properties one of them is required is the select id so this is the id or the unique id for each entity as you can see we will be using the id here so it's just a function that returns something unique so and it will be called for each object we have okay so comments to id So this is our adapter and just like that we have so many reducers or action creators we can call we have add many add one remove all remove many set all we have so many we have actually even selectors so we will come to that but this also gives us an initial state function so let's use it here so dot get initial state which is nice and this now let's go here and see what we will have Let's go to Redux state. As you can see, this is the initial state IDs and entities, array of IDs and object entities. Each key would be the ID, and the value will be the object of that comment. So that's it. So now we need to put the value we got here from this func into our reducer, into our slice using the reducers from the adapters. Okay. So we have two ways. The first one is the, I think it's the most obvious one. We will do that here. So the, remember the first argument here is everything you pass to it when you dispatch it. So if I passed here one, this will be the value here. Usually we'll do an object if you want to pass my stuff, but I'm not passing anything, so I will ignore it. And I need the second argument. And this is how you ignore arguments in JavaScript. You will put just underscore. The second argument is the configuration object they give you. I think it's called configuration. It's called func API. So they expose some functionality for you. I will distract from this functionality, the dispatch function. And this dispatch is the same one we are using here. Okay, the same one. 
so we can dispatch actually actions so let's dispatch so I'll save the data here then I will dispatch an action with this data and that action will be the set all action from the entity adapter and to do that I will come here and type set all comments to set all and yeah I will show you something really important to distinguish but let me just finish this example uh, const then sorry this would be the slice to actions so we have an action called set all comments and this points to the set all function from the adapter okay so let's use this one here and pass to it the data uh, and this thing I am doing this is formatting the code using prettier so let's now refresh we should see our entities uh, like this but I think we have an error take a look at the logic dispatch in the action yeah that's something uh, interesting so let me console log the data for you you'll see something you'll see a promise so it's a promise of pending so we need to await the fetch api or yeah and we need to await the converting data to a json so just put here await and this will await everything after it so when this resolves the json we will continue executing the next two lines so now it will work as you can see with no errors now go go to your redux you should see your state with IDs and entities like that okay I hope this is not confusing I, I, I am assuming that you know the basics of this kind of stuff or at least you tried it once so this is how you set your data inside of your entity adapters but I don't think this is the best way to do it uh, I think using extra reducers will make much more sense especially when you are doing stuff like uh, ha having a flag here maybe and that's the realistic case you will have a flag if these comments here or not if that HTTP request is pending or not so as you can see we only have ID and entities to add more things you will use the get initial state and pass to it extra object like this so loading will be false this is the initial state for the loading status so now re hit refresh you will see that we have loading of force so this is very nice and now let's handle all the dispatched actions from the thunk using extra reducers so first one is the pending when it's pending I will put our loading state our loading inside our state to true so now it's loading when it's fulfilled so fetch components dot fulfilled I will have a payload or I'm assuming that I'm accepting a payload and I will show you where that payload comes from so state dot loading will be equal to false so now we got the data but to set the data inside the state we can't just map it we should rely on the entity adapter to map this response to this IDs and entities objects to do that we will use the comments or sorry the comments adapter this object then dot set all and pass to it the state itself a reference to it of course and pass to it the payload okay you can't use this this needs to be used or the retained value from the set all comments reducer we defined here needs to be used with the dispatch function but you can use this alone inside the reducers the set all function from the adapter itself directly you can do that that's something to distinguish i hope that was uh, clear and uh, yeah so but the payload here we should retain it so we are not retaining anything so you can just retain that not don't assign it or anything remove and uh, that should be it i think something i forgot the set all state or the set all function sorry this will replace the old state and put a new one inside it replacing it so it will remove the IDs and the entities and put in a new one so another one is the add many add many it will just append so it depends on your use case but set all is very nice and at the moment we don't need that so remove it and remove our reducer maybe on now in rejected 
we will put our state dot loading to maybe false it's not it's not loading maybe you will have an error message so state dot error maybe you will put here error empty string so I think that's something really important to remember that you can combine your entity adapters initial state with other states and I'm planning actually to show you how we can combine multiple entity adapters at the same slice so that will be very interesting and uh, won't be that easy so let's move to that and this this our code we have an error yeah, I think yeah this comma sorry refresh we should see the pending as you can see loading have been turned to true so maybe you can show a spinner or something but this is very fast it's not that uh, good but yeah anyway you will see uh, that loading is true now if we filled you will see that loading is false and we have our IDs and entities so I think this will do it for the first video now the second video will use the selectors from the entity adapter to display a list of comments and each one of them will have like a form so we can delete patch or maybe we can post a comment so we'll do all the, the usual CRUD operations or not the usual the CRUD operations right create update and patch and delete so I think that's it that's it for this video I hope this was useful now we can close it but just to recap okay so that's it you can close it but I'm going to recap uh, all the information so first thing create entity adapters uh, help us to create CRUD functionality or help us to generate a common CRUD functionality for a specific entity in our app so it's very nice but in this series I'm going to show you how we can combine create a sync funk with the create entity adapter so I'm just combining these two if you think about it this is this is just about ordering stuff so I want to call the reducers from the comments adapter at specific time when my action creator in the funk dispatches a specific action for example here when it dispatches the fulfilled action I will call the sit all reducer from the adapter to create my entities so yeah it's just about order if you think about it you can figure out this by yourself so yeah I th and um, I think that's pretty much it that sums it up I think the most confusing part is that this adapter generates so many things that just works I think that's uh, yeah I mean these stuff are really common you will use them a lot uh, again and again so yeah I think that's it in this video the second one will display a list use some selectors from the create entity adapt from the create entity adapter and uh, that will be it and just remember this this is very important and uh, this is the most realistic use case you will have your adapter and extra flags or extra information so yeah and thank you and bye